Right, hello, I'm Stephan Tolan, one of the orthopedic sports medicine surgeons with the Stebbin Hawkins Clinic of the Carolinas, part of the Greenville Hospital System University Medical Center. I wanted to talk to you today a little bit about disorders of the proximal biceps. It's not a common disorder, but usually it does occur along with other problems in the shoulder, such as the rotator cuff, um, impingement syndrome, or subacromial bursitis. The long head of the biceps tendon originates from the biceps muscle. This splits into two different tendons. The one that we're concerned with, the longer head, is the one that inserts inside the shoulder joint itself. Common symptoms from this include pain in the anterior or front part of the shoulder, sometimes a clicking or catching in the shoulder, and difficulty with um, pulling and pushing on objects. Usually this can happen from a single event, from a hard pull, or can happen with repetitive smaller injuries such as weightlifting. Um, once identified as being part of the problem, this can usually be addressed with modifying the activity, um, decreasing the symptoms or the mechanisms that cause this. Sometimes we also can inject the biceps tendon area or the biceps tendon itself with uh, cortisone and lidocaine to see if we can settle it down. If these don't work, we can address this surgically uh, if the symptoms persist. With the long head of the biceps tendon, the surgical options usually consist of releasing the long head of the biceps tendon. This is usually the more simple and straightforward method. The difficulties with this are sometimes afterwards there's a, a marked or noted difference in the appearance of the biceps tendon, sometimes referred to as a Popeye deformity in the muscle, where the muscle actually um, gets more rounded in shape than football shape that it normally is. There also can be a slight decrease in the strength of flexion in the arm and also of sup supination strength, which also, which also is screwdriver uh, motion strength. Usually the deformity caused by the release um, is um, tolerated well by the patients, and studies have shown that releasing the biceps tendon is functionally tolerated just as well as reattaching the biceps tendon, which is the other alternative. Reattaching the biceps tendon is called the biceps tenodesis, and the tendon is released just like in the first procedure, but then a socket is created outside of the shoulder joint itself. This is done in the bone of the upper arm, and the biceps tendon is inserted into the socket and secured there with some type of fixation device. This is done usually in the younger, more active patients or the laborers to try and preserve the uh, supination or screwdriver type strength and also to um, preserve the overall look of the biceps tendon. This does have its disadvantages as well. It does require um, protection of the surgical site for two to three months to um, prevent pulling loose of the biceps tendon and also has been known to cause some increased stiffness in the shoulder postoperatively. On this model, this is a, a right shoulder and looking at this, this is the shoulder blade here and then this is the humerus and this is the upper arm. The biceps tendon the long head of the biceps tendon is depicted on this model. The short head would have come off and inserted on this part of the bone over here. That's usually not involved in shoulder disorders. The long head of the biceps, if I remove the upper part of the shoulder from the model, is a small tube-like structure. and Its function is not entirely known. It's felt to add some stability to the shoulder joint, um, but shoulders function very well without this. The difficulty with this biceps tendon is once it starts bothering a, a patient, it's hard to get it to settle down. The biceps can be affected in several ways. In this model here, it's in this little groove between these two bumps on the bone that are called the tuberosity. The biceps tendon can slip actually out of the groove and cause a snap or pain, or the biceps can just rub on one side of the groove and get partial tearing. So once this biceps tendon is involved, we would remove this damaged portion that was inside the shoulder joint and then reattach this part so it's outside of the shoulder joint but then still preserves 
the appearance and function of the biceps. The release, we would just release this top part and then the biceps would shift distally or, or down the arm some degree, um, but it would heal in in that position and, and still function almost just as well. Commonly, the biceps disorders are done more when we're addressing a rotator cuff tear than on their own. So a lot of times I'll talk to you or your surgeon will talk to you about the biceps tendon and that this may need to be addressed when you're having a shoulder surgery for a rotator cuff or another issue in the shoulder. Um, it usually does not delay the rehabilitation and usually functions just as well afterwards. Thank you.